Section 3.7 is going to continue this idea of coordinate plane, um, but this time we're going to apply um, our stuff about coordinate plane to perpendicular lines. So yesterday, let's just kind of um, retract a little bit. So yesterday we learned, or not really learned, we refreshed from algebra that uh, parallel lines had what? They had, the, they had the same slope. Same slope. Okay, so perpendicular lines, of course, are not going to have the same slope. No. Because then they would be parallel. So let's kind of explore, because notice it says find the slope of each line. So what we're going to do is we're going to see what do we know about slope involving perpendicular. So in this picture, we have two lines that are perpendicular. We okay. went ahead and drew these in here for you. Um, let's find the slope of each line. Uh, I'm going to call, I'm just going to say red and purple, so that way we can kind of keep the, or what, you're, you're on your, your notes, it's not going to be colored. So, so let's call this line L and uh, N, not M. So we're not going to find the M of M again? Not M to M. M. Okay. <laughs> so let's do line L first and the slope of it. Now, if I was finding the slope of a line that's already in, a, in the coordinate plane, already graphed, I could just count the rise to run. So let's do that. Okay. So they even even better, they give you two points to work with. All right. So which one do you want to start with? Well, I like to start with my leftmost. And kind of the way I would read it, that's the way I like to that's follow That's what I do. Too. So we're going to count the rise to run to get from the left point, so this point right here, to this point right here. So we're going to go where Ooh, I'm not rising, though. I am falling. Okay. So that means I'm going in a negative direction. So okay. how many am I counting? So one, one, two, three. So down three. So that'd be negative three. And to the right one would be a positive one. So down so three over one. So the slope would be a one. negative negative three. three. So line in, the slope is, let's pick now, two points. Yeah, I'm going to start with that leftmost. And I'm going to go a rise of one, so that's a positive one. And there I'm running three. To the right still again is that positive, so one over three or one third. And that doesn't simplify any further. Okay, right. So we have um, for one slope is negative three, one slope is negative, or up, uh, sorry, positive one third. Now, obviously they're not the same. And so you might be noticing something. I'm going to have you do one more thing before we talk about what we're noticing. Let's okay. find the product of these slopes. Now, what does it mean to find the product? Product would be to multiply them. So let's so. multiply these slopes. So we're going to take negative 3 and multiply by 1, one third. third. Okay, that product would be a negative 1. Okay, so let's kind of backtrack here and see what we're finding out. So we obviously know these were perpendicular to begin with. You found the slopes, and you might remember this from last year, mm -hmm. and then you see that there's a product here. So let's let's first talk about what you're noticing, Ms. Hope Gravy, about the two slopes. Well, I remember from Algebra 2 that those slopes are opposite reciprocals. So opposite signs, one's positive, one's negative, and I remember that's going to happen every single time. And reciprocal fractions. So one is that 3 over 1, and the other one is the 1 over 3. So I'm flipping the fraction. Okay, so the slopes are opposite reciprocals, and this all is because of the fact that these lines are perpendicular. perpendicular. Now, the other thing that I had you do was I had you find the product of the slopes. So when you multiply perpendicular slopes, what was our end result? Negative 1. Negative 1. So if I had any slopes that are of two lines that are perpendicular, so let's say I have a slope of 2 thirds. Okay. What would the opposite reciprocal slope be? So it would be a negative 3 over 2. And if I multiply those together, will I still get negative 1? Uh, well, if I, yeah, because I'm multiplying empty and top times top, bottom times bottom. So that would be a negative 6 over a 6 would still be a negative 1. So this idea of the product being negative 1 will work for every single set of perpendicular well, lines. Right, and just to kind of not really prove it for all cases, but just to show that generic example, even if I said A over B. Yeah. That opposite reciprocal would be a negative B over A. And when I multiply, I'd have a negative AB over positive AB. Anything divided by itself is still 1, so negative yeah. 1. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of, again, just to show it works for all kind cases. Kind of works for all cases. Now, anybody want to take a guess of what we're about to see? Uh -huh. Either a postular theorem, right? Probably. <laughs> I think it's a postulate. Yep. Yeah. I couldn't remember if it was a postulate or not. So this postulate, go ahead, Ms. Hoke, Okay. Take us through it. It's, again, talking about slopes of 
perpendicular lines. We've spent a lot of time this chapter talking about parallels. Mm -hmm. This is really talking just about the perpendicular lines. And it says, in a coordinate plane, two non-vertical, and we talked about the whole idea of those vertical lines are really special because mm -hmm. that's when we're starting to look at the undefined slopes. Mm -hmm. So two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if. So biconditional. Biconditional. The product of their slopes is negative one. Notice this postulate focuses on the product of their slopes. It does mm -hmm. not say opposite reciprocal fractions in mm -hmm. there at all. So really when we're proving lines to be perpendicular, we need to show that the product of their slopes will be negative one. We also have this kind of extra conditional piece on there that says horizontal and vertical lines are also going to be perpendicular to each other. And the reason why that's not in that postulate is because what do we know about the vertical line slope? The vertical lines had those undefined slopes. And you and really can't multiply an undefined slope times zero. Yeah, and zero is being and the zero horizontal. And zero is always going to make it zero. But hopefully instead. you guys know vertical, kind of imagine vertical line and imagine a horizontal line to it. It's obviously they're going to be perpendicular. Exactly. Okay, so that, those, the, that kind of case is the only kind of the unique case. You can't actually use that postulate because you can't multiply those to get a negative one. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So just looking at this, what I want you guys to realize though is that it's talking about the product of their slopes will always be negative one. That's the key on this piece. Is if you're proving two lines to be perpendicular, you really need to show the product of their slopes is negative one.